Hello everyone and welcome to this video. I'm Aya from Allergies with Aya and in this specific presentation I'm going to be talking a little bit about IgE mediated food allergy and I'm going to be giving just a brief presentation about IgE mediated food allergy to complement episode two from the podcast Allergies with Aya. Okay let's get started then. So there are three broad categories of food allergy and these include IgE mediated food allergy, non-IgE mediated food allergy and mixed. So both IgE mediated and non-IgE mediated food allergy. And in this specific presentation, I'll just be focusing on IgE mediated food allergy. But if you want to find out a little bit more about the other two types of food allergy, then please do head over to episode two of the podcast Allergies with Aya, because I discuss this in a little bit more detail. OK. So definitions. Definitions are really important. And so I thought I'd just quickly kind of run through the definitions because I'll be using these quite a lot in my presentation. So food allergy is defined as an adverse immune reaction to certain food allergens, also known as food protein antigens. And an allergen is an otherwise harmless substance capable of triggering an immune response that starts in the immune system and results in an allergic reaction in certain individuals. In the case of food allergies, it is a food protein antigen which triggers a response in sensitized individuals. And an antigen is simply any substance that can evoke an immune response and cause the production of antibodies. And in the case of food allergies, the antigen is the food protein causing the allergic reaction. And we call this an allergen. Antibodies can, rec can recognize a unique part of an antigen, and this is called an epitope. And they recognize this unique part and they bind to it. And this triggers an immune response. Antigens can also trigger T cell immune responses. And sensitization is just an asymptomatic primary immune response to an antigen, which, can tri which triggers the production of antibodies. And sensitization is just the production of antibodies. It's your body really producing antibodies to a specific antigen. So what is IgE mediated food allergy? Well, IgE mediated food allergy can be defined as a pathological immune reaction to a food protein antigen, also known as an allergen. And this basically causes the production of immunoglobin E, which is an antibody produced when an allergen is encountered. So IgE, mediated food allergy often causes immediate onset of symptoms and these symptoms can arise quite rapidly after the allergen has been encountered so this can often happen within two minutes of encountering the allergen but sometimes can take up to two hours and symptoms of IgE mediated food allergy can include things like itchy watery eyes, itchy ears or mouth, runny nose, sneezing, hives or a skin rash, nausea, vomiting or diarrhea, flushed skin, swollen tongue or lips, and in more severe cases known as anaphylaxis, which can be potentially fatal. Symptoms can include things like breathing difficulties, chest tightness, feeling dizzy or feeling faint, low blood pressure or trouble swallowing. And food allergy occurs once a person has become sensitized. So once a person is able to produce antibodies to the allergen, then they can have a symptomatic reaction. And initial sensitization results in an asymptomatic reaction where IgE antibodies are produced. So what happens is the allergen, the food protein antigen, diffuses through epithelial cells and is picked up by antigen presenting cells such as dendritic cells. And these cells go to lymph nodes and they present the antigen to naive CD4 T cells. 
and naive CD4 T cells then differentiate to help T helper 2 cells. And T helper 2 cells then secrete cytokines. And these cytokines enable B cells to differentiate into plasma cells, which produce IgE antibodies. These IgE antibodies then bind to FCR receptors on effector cells, such as mast cells, and this is called priming. Once mast cells are primed or other effector cells are primed, then an allergic reaction can occur. So on future exposure to the allergen, a symptomatic response occurs. So the allergen again diffuses through epithelial cells and is picked up by Ig antibodies, which are bound to FCR receptors on mast cells, for example. And what happens when this occurs is the mast cell will burst and degranulate, essentially, and release mediators, chemical mediators. These can be preformed mediators or newly made mediators, such as histamine, cytokines, interleukin, tumor necrosis factors, and many, many more. And these all result in the symptoms that you experience during an allergic reaction. For example, histamine can cause vasodilation, resulting in liquid being released from capillaries and going into tissues. And this can kind of result in things like a runny nose or watery eyes. Now, how do we diagnose IgE-mediated food allergy? Well, I'm no, just making sure that I was actually recording, so that's fine. Um, so how do we diagnose IgE-mediated food allergy? Well, the gold standard method to diagnosing IgE-mediated food allergy is called a food challenge, an oral food challenge a double blind placebo control food challenge. And what this essentially is, is where a patient or a subject is given incremental doses of an allergen in a specific time frame until an allergic reaction occurs. So for example, you know, they could be given um, a little bit of an allergen in, for example, a chocolate matrix, a chocolate pudding matrix. And this dose of an allergen will be increased gradually over time. So every 20 minutes, they'll be giving an increased amount of this allergen until an allergic reaction is seen. And once an allergic reaction is seen, then they're said to be allergic and they're diagnosed as having food allergy. However, this is very costly and very time consuming and is just not really commonly done. Historically, what has been kind of done to diagnose patients as having food allergy is sensitization tests. And sensitization tests are not clinical confirmed food allergy. But what they do is they kind of give you an indication if someone is allergic. So one example of, this, of a sensitization test is a skin prick test. And this is where the skin is pricked and then a droplet of the allergen is put onto the skin. And if the subject's skin swells, then they're said to be sensitized to the allergen because they're producing IgE antibodies to the allergen. Another example of this is a serum IgE test where a patient's blood is taken and then the serum is mixed with, with um, allergen. And if IgE antibodies specific to the allergen so bind to kind of the allergen, then again, they're said to be sensitized to the allergen. And what doctors would do is they'd use kind of sensitization tests along with clinical history. And they'd talk to patients about their history and their kind of history of allergic reactions and what has happened when they've eaten a specific food, for example. And they'd combine it with the results from a sensitization test to say that someone is allergic to something and to diagnose someone's having food allergy. But as I said, sensitization tests are not clinically confirmed food allergy. And lastly, why is food allergy so important? So food allergy roughly costs the NHS around 900 million every year in primary allergy care and around 68 million in hospital admissions. And in the UK, an estimated 2 million people are living with diagnosed food allergy. And as a food allergy sufferer myself, I can really, really tell you that it really does affect the quality of people's lives. 
And I really, really resonate with this. And so that's kind of why it's so important to really research food allergy. All right, so this is just the summary of everything that we discussed in this video. I hope you found it interesting and I look forward to seeing you in my podcast Allergies with Aya in the future. All the references will be provided in the video description. And yes, um, please do subscribe. If you enjoyed this video, then please do leave a comment. Um, I'd be happy to kind of get back to you on any scientific queries that you may have. All right. Bye-bye now.